Awesome. Good afternoon, everyone. Are we the last group that you guys get to see today? Yeah. Awesome. So. Well, I hope we can knock off a few then. Uh, we are Oxford Directs. Uh, thank you for having us. So you're going to learn a little bit about us, our names, and we'll on the next slide. My name is Evan Enders. I'm a senior IMC student. I actually have a final after this, and then I'm done and graduating. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. And I'm from uh, Detroit, Michigan. And so I'll be driving 13 hours home on Saturday after I finish my finals for one last time. And uh, that's me. Oh, my name is Robert Whitaker. I'm from Salisbury, North Carolina. I'm a senior IMC major. I'll be graduating in January. My name is Ilana Bostery. I'm a senior IMC major from Pasadena, California. And I will be graduating after my final exam. Yeah. I'm Anicia. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. I'm an IMC major, and I graduate today, too. I'm Kristen Lesby, I'm an IMC major, um, I'm from Memphis, and I'll be graduating in May. I'm Amanda Manor, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, I'm an IMC senior right now, and I'll be graduating at the end of January. Awesome. Like I said, our uh, campaign name is Oxford Direct, and we are pleased to present this IMC campaign through the Meek School of Journalism and New Media, through our uh, IMC campaign class. Um, we appreciate the opportunity for downtown Tupelo to come visit us on this beautiful Thursday afternoon and uh, hope that you will see through our presentation and through the campaign book in front of you um, the, the benefits of executing our campaign. Um, researching, and, researching and visiting Tupelo this semester, we went a couple down, times down and visited for one of the events and we've been researching for the past 13 weeks. Um, we decided to focus our entire campaign and objectives around Veterans Day, which tended to be a uh, huge event in Tupelo as we were down there a couple weeks ago. Um, we believe that it will help achieve the objectives of generating activity as well as corporate sponsorships through the promotional events, boosting of the local economy, bringing the community together, and then enticing the corporate sponsorships through uh, consumer engagement and also our sponsorship benefits that you will learn throughout this presentation. So, a little bit about the company history. Um, Downtown Tupelo Main Street Association has seen continued success in economic progress while supporting historic standards. And expansion really starts with identifying community characteristics. And what Downtown Tupelo Main Street Association really saw was the huge Elvis fan base and wanted to capitalize on that and created a wildly successful event for rock fans around the world. So, we recognized the veteran community within Tupelo, and we wanted to create an event that will back these men and women to strengthen the community. And creating partnerships with local businesses uh, is capitalizing on Tupelo's current assets. The power of promotion will entice downtown businesses, business owners, to spread awareness about our upcoming event. Promoting local businesses through the mission of supporting United States veterans will create a cohesive marketing plan through Tupelo, Mississippi. And the event will also drive local economies, improving Tupelo's economic vitality. Okay, we chose three nearby locations that we deem our biggest competition. It's going to be the Oxford Square, the Molly Barnes Crossing in Tupelo, and then uh, Memphis, Tennessee, Bill Street. Um, the Barnes Crossing Mall, Tupelo, it's in Tupelo, so it appeals to the city itself. The peak season are the holidays, which is Christmas and Black Friday. Um, they're constantly announcing, constantly keeping locals involved by announcing incentives. Um, it is the biggest commercial mall, so they bring in business on weekends and increase traffic. Um, and their incentives are $1,000 shopping spree that they give away, they give away for every year. Um, and they bring in social media and they bring in customers through social media and email newsletters. For Bill Street, it's um, a little over 100 miles, it's not far from Tupelo. Um, their version of DTMSA is the Downtown Business Commission and they give away grants to people who want to help the city thrive. Um, and they also have local events from, um, from Memphis called Food Truck Thursdays and they do that around 2 to 4. And then it's a college city. Um, we have colleges like Mississippi State and uh, Christian Brothers, and along with high school students. Sites nearby also highlight Memphis, this Bill Street, by like the FedEx Forum and the Pyramid and the Sex Museum. And the square, um, 
is the epicenter of nightlife. It is also always busy on Friday and Saturday nights, and also busy during the days on Sundays. Ole Miss is here, and so they bring in younger crowds and then high school students, and they attract and provide coupon incentives for food. And then the shops and boutiques are unique, and they're owned by locals, and you won't find many of, the, uh, many of these stores anywhere else. And they have attractions, school, square books, um, the phone booth, buildings, food, art galleries, and the bars here. So, why we're bringing these um, competitions to light is going to answer. Next slide. Oh, I'm sorry. It's going to answer what they have that we don't. And so, Oxford Agency is going to bring an event to cater events, um, community engagement, and membership incentives with sponsorship available. Tupelo has a very diverse population. It has about 35,000 residents. The town is almost 100% urban, so most of the people are in town. And there's about 2,300 veterans. Surrounding towns we include and we can market to are Saltillo, Pontotoc, and Fulton, and more surrounding communities. The population has slowly increased since the last census. We believe attractions such as Elvis's birthplace, the Natchez Trace, and the Bankwip South Arena can bring in tourists to the town. Um, we also believe that it could be a hub for bigger cities such as Memphis, Birmingham, and Little Rock. In this SWOT analysis we did, um, the strengths include inclusiveness and diversity within the town. We all visited some of the Main Street Association events they put on this semester, and we interviewed people, and we were overwhelmed by the people who just love Tupelo. If you're in Tupelo, you're gonna to wanna to support Tupelo and you have pride for it. So we believe that if an event is hosted, people will come. Weaknesses include the uptown area that she described, the mall, the big chain restaurants, and getting people to wanna to shop and eat locally and not go to the trains. Opportunities are the high number of veterans we saw that we believe we can tap into this market and um, celebrate these heroes. Threats include other small cities like Oxford that has a historic downtown square and New Albany, which has its own downtown Main Street Association, which is only 30 miles away. Um, Tupelo Main Street Association's current position in the market, marketplace is that it represents the hardworking people of Tupelo, a community that is progressing every day while it still holds on to its roots. Um, it stands for the locally owned businesses that embody the community and the people that frequent them. It is resilience and revitalization. What Downtown Tupelo Main Street Association does different in its competition is it creates an experience rather than a destination that you cannot find at a mall. Whether it's a fun family experience at the Down on Main concert series, a historical experience visiting Elvis's birthplace, or an experience of camaraderie hitting the L Trail with a group of friends, Downtown Tupelo is something for everyone. So there are three main target audiences that we really wanted to focus on and the first is John and he's a U.S. veteran and he lives in Tupelo, Mississippi. He uh, is an active member of the community and volunteers any opportunity he possibly can and a way to uh, target John is through radio and print advertisement and we wanted John to sort of be the face of the event, the local hero, what Tupelo embodies. And then our second target audience is Haley, and she is a junior at Tupelo High School. She just started driving and really just wants to be interacting with her peers and in the community. And uh, we wanted to really target Haley because after college, we're hoping for more young people to come back to Tupelo and support and volunteer. And a way to reach her is through the spread and share of our social media campaign, because we all know Millennials are obsessed with social media, we're all guilty of that for sure. And our third is Tom, and he is 25, lives alone, loves the arts, music, and desires to see Tupelo grow in size and culture. And a way to target Tom is through social media and print advertisements. All right, now that we uh, kind of had a description of downtown Tupelo and uh, the demographics there, we're going to go into the strategy. So uh, during our campaign, we're going to utilize both traditional and digital marketing pieces to raise awareness throughout the event and during the event to eventually achieve our objectives. The event will be running for six weeks, like we said, from October 1st to October 11th, which is Veterans Day, of course, of 2018. 
And so going on the veteran, going on the veteran thing, like uh, Christine, uh, Kristen said, they have about 2,500 veterans in the city, which is actually a high number compared to other surrounding cities. So we thought this would be an interesting market to kind of rally a campaign, or a campaign around to embrace them and also basically, and, and, uh, basically just use them as the poster boy for this campaign, just kind of getting the community to unite together. So what we're going to do on Veterans Day, which is going to be the main day of our event, is we're going to actually host a scavenger hunt that is looking for these right here, this really small, these American pens. So unfortunately, Oxford doesn't have any pens without Ole Miss on them, but uh, ours <laughs> would actually just be the normal veteran American flag pen. And what's going to happen with these pens on Veterans Day is the select amount of stores that we will advertise through our social media and through our participating cards, which we'll, you'll see later. They're just little postcards with all the participating locations on it just indicating the discount. So what will happen is on this day from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., the stores, the selected stores that uh, will be all our corporate sponsors will go in and they'll have a select amount of pens and they can go into their store and select any of the products that they want. And they can go in before, it, before the store is open. They're gonna place those pens on a teddy bear if it's a gift shop or next to a menu item or something of that sort. So any products that they want. So they have the opportunity to pick. If they have a high inventory in a product, they can pick those products if they really want to get rid of inventory or something. But the key is that when, when the door is open, it's gonna be like a scavenger hunt, kind of like an Easter egg. So basically, it's gonna it's going involve the kids, it's gonna involve the families, everyone's gonna love it because you're gonna have this, comp this friendly competition within the community. Everyone wants to find these pins on these products and get that 15% discount. So right there is gonna generate that activity that people are gonna come, they're gonna to wanna to be a part of this event. They're gonna to want to find that pen. The kid's gonna to want to find that pen and go up to his grandfather who's a local veteran that's in the community and that's gonna bring that community together through, that, uh, through this kind of event. It's, well, like I said, it's a very interactive event that uh, won't necessarily just be, all right, here's your discount price, go get it. It's more find your discount, find your price, enjoy your community, enjoy your family, make that memory in downtown Tupelo, which is what we're kind of going for. Um, this event, well, obviously, we want it to not only be a one-time thing. If we pair it with Veterans Day, a holiday that happens every single year, we hope that this event will eventually pair with Veterans Day. So when people in downtown Tupelo think of Veterans Day, they're like, oh, we can go look for those little pins on the products and get that 50% discount. That's going to be something that we want to build on and kind of build off of the image of Veterans Day. So that's going to go into our messaging strategy. Like I said, um, we are quite aware that Tupelo does a phenomenal things for the veterans. I'm trying to look for the wall picture you guys had this year. These are from the local newspapers. Just some stories on veterans. They had that, uh, what was the Vietnam Wall that was put up that represents all the veterans in the community. We don't want to take away from the things that are happening outside, the museum, all of that. We don't want to take away from that image at all. What we want to do is build on that. We want to take that audience and bring them downtown. Because that audience is a different, a different demographic that usually downtown Tupelo gets. Downtown Tupelo gets the shoppers, gets the moms, gets the, gets the younger generation come down there because those shops down there are either homey or trying to get a new home, um, they've got some bars. The, the older dem uh, demographic that's visiting these uh, events are, are not necessarily, their next stop isn't downtown Tupelo. We're going to try to build that and make the community unity so they will come to downtown Tupelo. Um, the way we're going to do that is through emotional strategy. Uh, obviously, when you think of Veterans Day, there's huge emotional appeal that comes with it. So we're going to take this and take the, what we're going to do is we're going to write future stories on some of the local veterans, and that's going to help carry this emotional support to our campaign. Like I said before, the family members, what we want, what we want to do is we want to build that picture of a kid going up to, finding that pen with a smile on his face, taking it off, going up to his grandfather who served, matching it with his pen, and creating that memory. That memory will make, will be in downtown Tupelo, in the businesses, in the corporate sponsors. So that will be a positive image for all the corporate sponsors because when they think about, when they think back to Veterans Day, all of the audience, they'll think, remember, remember that day when my son was at X store in downtown Tupelo? It'll kind of bring that memory back and when you rewind that, that memory, it'll be kind of a return on the investment and you'll see them generating those memories again and wanting to come back to that store. So that's what we're kind of focusing for, and when I'm saying corporate, uh, corporate sponsor placement, it's basically just placing them in the consumer's positive image. That image of making those positive memories. 
being able to go down there and have a great time, being able to form community unity, all of that through an event that focused around something that honors and respects the people that serve for this country. So that's what uh, the messaging strategy is going towards. And then uh, also, to, this is just going to be a timeline of the things that will happen throughout our event, kind of just touching on all of our pieces that we will utilize. Uh, on October 1st, the beginning of our campaign, we are going to release a press release. And this press release is really just the initial information of the event, the facts, the date, the time, and then incentives for local businesses to want to be a part of our event and to want to show their support to the veterans. Um, so next we have a 30 second radio spot. This radio spot will be played on six different stations around the Tupelo area. Uh, it will alternate daily from the morning drive time to the afternoon drive time. Um, and this is the, an example of our proposed radio spot. Um, it highlights the key information about the event, it checks social media for uh, the deal days that are going to be going along before the actual event. Um, and this will uh, generate more social media engagement, more impressions, like interactions with the uh, consumers. But it will also help generate more activity downtown by making the target public aware of the event and all the details that go along with it. Uh, we believe that playing on six different stations will help generate as much activity as possible because it will be able to reach a wider variety of the target public. And we are planning on doing feature stories about three different veterans, so there will be three feature stories throughout the six-week campaign. They will each be implemented um, two, like two weeks apart. So for the feature stories, they're mainly going to be interviews. Like There's an example on the side of just an introduction a little bit about like this person, Joe Smith, that I created. Um, like There'll be a little bit about him. Then it's going to be like a Q&A kind of thing. And then at the bottom, it's just um, thanking them for their support and all of that kind of stuff. And then um, it's going to be used to raise awareness about the local veterans in the community and hopes to gain support for Downtown Tupelo Main Street Association and for the local veterans. Um, it's also going to be used just to get to know a local veteran member. And we're also thinking that the veterans showcased in these feature stories will be at the participating locations on the weeks that they're showcased. And then at the end, on November 11th, they will all be there um, when all the stores are participating. It's just kind of like a meet and greet and a way to know like your local veterans, your local community. And uh, so we're also going to have the social media posts. So what um, Mason was talking about in the daily deals. So one of the incentives for our corporate sponsors is they're not only going to be able to partake in our final event on Veterans Day, but once we post an Instagram, well, they first have to join with us, and there's also many other incentives other than this, but this is one of them. Once they join with us, we will post out on uh, Downtown Tupelo's Instagram, which right now, last night, it had 2,996 followers. I hope you guys got up to 3,000. I gave it a follow, so maybe it's up there. But um, <laughs> what we're going to do is once we post their uh, company, you can go to the next slide in a minute. Once we post just like this, once this is Tupelo Hardware, uh, those are not my hands. I had to bring a girl with me because I have gross fingernails. But right here, what we're going to do is this is kind of what goes along. So basically, you see the American flag, you see Tupelo Hardware. Obviously, that means they're going to be a participating event. And then our caption also solidifies that. It lets, it lets people know that I, I kind of got quirky with it. I said, Tupelo Hardware says, don't be a hound dog. Come save some money. Just kind of referencing that Elvis thing. Um, so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be utilizing hashtags, hashtag vet pen, hashtag Veterans Day to create an interaction with our community. So when people go into the stores, they can see these hashtags and they create it. You click on that hashtag on Instagram, you see all these people that are doing it, it entices more people to come downtown and join that event. They see people with these little flags and they're realizing they're getting money, their kids are having a good time, maybe there's some ice cream that's discounted off. It's, it's all, in, all in good benefit. So, like I said, the corporate sponsors, these, the, this is one of the big incentives of uh, our, our campaign for corporate sponsors because if they join with us, they will have this free recognition and also not only have the campaign on Veterans Day, which involves all of the participating locations, but they'll have a separate 48-hour window where they'll have their own little campaign as well. So therefore, they'll generate more activity, they'll be able to not have competitors within the area, there's not going to be people jumping from store to store because the pins are out here, pins are out there. They're going to have the opportunity to control that all, which will be a nice incentive for them and generate more business for them. Um, as long as the following, with those 3,000 followers that we have, 
because we're tagging them in the post and their location is set up at the top, obviously anybody that sees that is going to look at that and that's general awareness. Maybe not all 3,000 are going to go and follow them, but the percentage wise, they're at least going to gain some engagement and at least going to gain people looking at that and a couple followers, which is positive business for them as well. Like I said, uh, just the general awareness of the campaign that these Instagrams are going to post. At the, uh, the bottom of our post, after I announced that they're, they're partnering with us and they're going to be have the 48 hour window and then claim your deal, I go back to join us November 11th for the search, search for flag scavenger hunt. Tupelo is one of many participating businesses offering amazing deals on a variety of items. So we go back using these posts to our general campaign, which will create that awareness as well because if people go out and they do this 48 hour window and they get their deal, they'll other, obviously not everyone's going to see this and by word of mouth they'll be like, oh, how'd you get that, where'd you get that vet pen? I saw that picture on Facebook of you with that hashtag, what is that? And then all of a sudden you go back and you read the post and then they'll, they'll guarantee to be there November 11th. And November 11th is also a Sunday, which is awesome for the campaign. Um, and then, of course, engagement with the use of hashtags and uh, being able to look at those and search those and see all the general posts that have been posted will help create the community unity that I keep going back to and have the feel of uh, just being able to go there and have veterans and support these veterans and use that hashtag for uh, price promotions and also just general happiness. Uh, so another one of our deliverables is a participating medications card. Um, it is uh, for general information about the event, the three percent off, the date, and the time, and then on the other side it has the participating businesses for that for the final event. Uh, and this is the example of uh, our proposed uh, participating locations card. Um, it accomplishes the goal of generating activity because uh, offering incentive of money off for people to come downtown, you're going to get more people to come downtown and participate. Um, it benefits the businesses because it drives sales and it's a good cause that like, they want to attach the name to. And we have digital ads. We have two different kinds of digital ads um, set up so far. And one would be for social media and one would be for the Bancorp South Arena, the um, digital running ads and the, sorry, and the um, digital ad that they have outside of Bancorp South Arena. Um, so these ads are just an example of different ones that would be posted on social media. And it's just talking about when the event is and um, what you're looking for, the hashtags, and then for more information, visit the website. So um, these ads would be placed on social media two weeks before the events, but also throughout the events periodically. Um, just so people know this is an ongoing thing, like it's not just one day. Um, also, they would be used to raise awareness about the upcoming events in downtown Tupelo and then by positioning the ad on social media, the followers or any other people really can click on the link to visit the website and they can like, comment, share, react, etc. Um, on the posts and then also maybe with these ads people will also like, follow, share the page. And um, this measures impressions and engagement for not just your website, but for also your social media. And then this is the digital running ad um, that we have planned. It's very simple, very basic. Um, but people at Bank Corp South are passing the Bank Corp South Arena billboard um, digital ad. Would um, They would see it. And then it has the website on here, so people can visit it from their phone. Um, and what we've calculated is this would generate about 65,000 impressions. Um, so by placing this ad here, everyone's going to see it. Um, and also, this will measure engagement from like to your website also. All right, just uh, do a little brief summary of the event and to kind of touch on the two uh, objectives that we were given to generate uh, generate activity towards the downtown area and then also also increase the uh, corporate sponsors. So going back to it, the, to generate activity, these deals, these 15% off deals, like I said, everybody enjoys saving money. And when it's for a good cause, that's even better. So those general deals are going to be an incentive for people to come downtown and visit. For if it's not your family, then those are your general shoppers. The community, being downtown, making these memories as a community together, you're going to have your grandfather that served in the war. You're going to be able to go to the monument with him because we're not trying to take away from those monuments. And then you can go and enjoy these deals or go to church and then go 
know, save some money, get a discounted meal, get some ice cream with your kid. It's going to be a, a huge thing about community you're going to be bringing the community, community together and, and, help, and basically giving this positive exposure to these veterans while creating an event out of it. And then also the event cards that we have not mentioned yet. So the 2018 calendar for November is actually not updated on the website yet, so I didn't have any actual events that were going to be upcoming. But these cards will be handed out throughout our campaign, and uh, basically what they'll do is that they'll advertise, obviously, our main event at the end of uh, at the end of our campaign, and then they will advertise all of the events that are going to be happening during our campaign or after our campaign. And so these are actually, if you think about the Ole Miss baseball schedules, they're about that big, it's fit in your wallet. They're like one of those business cards, but they're vertical. So that's what these are. So they're going to be that size. So instead of going to the website and not and not seeing what's on, what's up next, it basically takes the research out of out of for them. So they can easily just look and be like, oh, this is today, and go. And that'll create a lot more activity downtown for these events because a lot of people don't do it because they don't think about it unless they see it on their Facebook or a notification for it. And uh, also for our sponsors, um, keep talking about these event cards. The people that go and, and uh, are one of our sponsors through our event will see their logo on the back of these event cards. So those event cards are going to stick around for a long time in people's purses, people's wallets. They're going to be upside down ones and they're going to see one of those logos and automatically think, oh wow, look at the camouflage. They sponsor the veteran event. Good image. It's a positive image on their part. Um, other incentives for the corporate sponsors will include a 10% off um, from their membership fee, so I know it's one to three members, it's $150 for the members, so they would receive a $15 discount. Down Down Two Below Mississippi uh, Main Street Association has also pledged throughout our campaign to donate 10% to the local Veterans Museum. So this is going to be a way for the uh, for any of the corporate sponsors to look at this event, realize that they do save some money on it, and they also are giving money to a donation. So that, that is a positive way for them to think about it. There's also a bunch of other incentives that involve our Instagram, the free so the uh, free exposure, the positive image that will come with um, their stores in the downtown Tupelo area when these memories are made. And those are kind of all of the points that come together and make this campaign achieve both activity and sponsors. And then lastly, I. Uh, decided to design these custom t-shirts um, that basically are just, a, again, a support to the local veterans. The first 500 will be handed out for the community, so that's kind of incentive for the people to come quickly after church or after lunch and come to the community. Those are they're actually pretty cool shirts. I was pretty impressed with myself. And then the corporate sponsors are also on the bottom of it. So they're going to have not only their logo um, on the back of the event cards, but they'll have their logo on the t-shirt that I would personally wear all the time, so they should wear all the time. And then also we'll have those Instagram posts and also the discounted prices. And then these are just some optional logos we made. Um, they're more of a design element, but you could use them for any of your downtown Tupelo Main Street Association um, stuff that you send out throughout the six-week campaign. That would be press releases, the feature stories. You could even put it on your website just to show support. You could put it on your social media just for the six weeks. Um, but it's also a symbol of support for the local veterans since they're the ones that are being recognized throughout the campaign and for Veterans Day. And then lastly, this is just our uh, general budget for the campaign. We were told that we were giving a $40,000 budget. We are only going to use 31% of that $40,000, which leaves a solid $27,570 remaining for other events that can happen during the six-week campaign, or just if they want to increase advertising, any of that. The way our pricing got broken down, it's the most expensive was obviously the radio spots. There's With these 40 days, there's going to be in six stations, there's going to be a total of 240 30 second slots that we're going to purchase. Each one of those slots is $25, and so that adds up to $1,000 per radio station, which gives us a grand total of $6,000. Um, the traditional ways were actually, it was hard to research how much it would be for to advertise a feature story and advertise a press release, but what I looked up and what I researched, usually it takes around with printing, and if we want to hire a copywriter or whatnot, it would take about $900 total to release those. Um, with the use of uh, social media and the ability to have a website and an email list, it would be significantly cheaper because technically we're, tech we're trying to get away from traditional advertising and that's a lot more cost efficient and we love saving the trees, so that's good. 
And then also the digital graphics that she was talking about, um, which estimated about 65,000 impressions. They are, it's going to be, we're running it for two weeks. We're, only, we're not going to run it for the full four weeks. We're going to run it two weeks, purchasing a, uh, every, I, think, I believe it was every six second slot. And so it will generate about 65,000 impressions, like Amanda said, and that'll cost about $1,200. And then the general printing of promotional cards, the event sponsor cards, which will all be done on uh, Vistaprint because you can just use your digital graphic that we created on InDesign and just place it right in there. The only cost you'll be paying for is buying the cards and printing them because everything under, over 500 of a quantity is free for shipping, which is awesome. So that'll be a total of $300. And then the t-shirt giveaway, which will be our second highest expense of $3,930, priced at $7.38 uh, per t-shirt um, with 500 of them, that's going to be a huge incentive for our corporate sponsors because I believe those t-shirts are pretty cool and they're going to have that corporate sponsor on the back so that money will be spent well and also we are still have about 70% of our budget available so this will be again another incentive for corporate sponsors and for kids and families to come down and receive those t-shirts. So that's just your basic budget breakdown. And then for evaluation. Um, for our objectives to increase the downtown traffic, to get more um, sponsors, and just to raise awareness about the vets and downtown Tupelo Main Street Association, we chose to use mass media impressions, social media impressions and engagement, uh, website impressions and engagement, um, just observing downtown traffic increase, and then just really observing how many more sponsors you get by the end of 2018. Um, mainly for what I do want to say is for the website impressions and engagement, that's not as easy to measure, but it can be done for free through Google Analytics. So I think that would be a good way to do that one. Any questions? The, the engagement aspect, I, I think, is, 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 is cool. Uh, one thing I think can do with that is you have to be careful with the PR side of things. And there's a lot of they're necessarily trying to use them to gain some monetary uh, gain from, you know, from, from the PR standpoint, involving those stores in some way, you know, I think is, is, is good. I just, the only thing I would say is be real careful about making it look like you're using them just to raise money. And that is one thing that I um, did forget to mention, my apologies, but I do want to only interview veterans that are willing to be interviewed well, like I want to disclose everything like this may end up in a magazine this may end up in the newspaper this may end up online on the website um, I don't want to put anyone on the spot and then not know about it and I also understand that it's kind of difficult for veterans some veterans to talk about their experiences so I don't want to go overboard with that could you actually wind back a little bit and explain more about the decision to pick veterans as a target um, we think that it would be a good idea just because I know that um, downtown Tupelo wants to get traffic downtown, but we wanted to also kind of do it for a cause. So we feel like more sponsors might join because they're supporting a cause. More people will come down downtown because they're supporting a cause. And 10% um, of the sponsorships, like 10% of what they pay to join, would go to um, the veteran charities that are there in Tupelo. I wouldn't necessarily say that the veteran community is our target. That's not who we're trying to get necessarily downtown, because it is Veterans Day, so if there's an event regarding veterans, they will come downtown. So we're not trying to get them necessarily downtown, we're trying to have them and their families and anyone that comes downtown to enjoy them, embrace them, and also have some fun, save some money, and you kind of generate that activity, that community feel within the community, where you're walking around and you see uh, your friend or your neighbor, and you say, oh, like, what, 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 pro what price promotion did you have today? Oh, Tula Harbor had this great, they had the veteran pin on this great deal. And so you're kind of talking, and then all of a sudden the veterans are all walking around in their, in their pens, the, ch the children, like I said, have their pens from the uh, products that they found that their parents are saving money on. So it's kind of, it's not necessarily we're targeting veterans, we're more um, taking, up, taking advantage, not taking advantage is a bad word, but <laughs> taking the ability of Veterans Day and making it in a community-wide event to where they're not going, they'll spend, I don't, like I said, I don't want to take away from the museum or from any events that are happening off off-site. Off I would love for them to do that and then I would and I would love for our audience to also join them in that and make it a family event and then for them to come back to enjoy the discounts and to enjoy everything together. Like I said, 
the, they're gonna, they can have a discounted meal, they can have a discounted item. You can sit down with a veteran. Maybe there's other veterans in the community that don't know each other. Their families get connected. They make these memories that will make people want to come back to those restaurants, those bars, those stores later on in the year. Okay. What, um, what made y'all decide for it to be a six-week campaign? Um, what just, what, we kind of decided it was a six-week just so we could build up the engagement and also because we I was reading through these stories and they started releasing them about two to three weeks and so what we want to do is we want to have our campaign like completely solidified in the radio and everything and so people are aware of it before the local media decided to make more future stories on it we would like to get a future story or two out before then so we don't have to necessarily compete with them or take away from their stories so we can all kind of run this event together and just run it and both just generate awareness for the same exact cause. We don't want to, because it's Veterans Day, we don't want to start to try fighting the museum or anything for their audience. Like I said, we want to build with them on a bigger event. Another thing that stood out to me, you said it's going to be on a Sunday in 2018. Mm -hmm. So there would have to be some working with downtown businesses, the downtown Chipotle folks could speak to it, but you know, will these restaurants and businesses be right. able to Right, right, exactly. We, we thought about that, we, definitely, we, and it was something that we would have to work with these certain businesses to see if they would stay open for this. But I don't really think they would say no to get business in there. So hopefully. I think also what Evan said at the beginning of the presentation, how Veterans Day is a yearly, already established holiday. So I think that that's what we wanted to capitalize on. And um, I think businesses would like to have their name on, even if it's on a Sunday, have their name on helping Veterans Day and veterans as a community cohesive when I was down, when I was downtown, um, right before Veterans Day, y'all uh, put a bunch of American flags all around the community, and it looks really nice. Um, what I was thinking, because I did research and see that a lot of, a lot of those businesses and restaurants are closed, that with if we if this event was marketed marketed well enough, they of course would see the business opportunity as well as they understand that it is supporting a bigger cause than then shutting down their business on a Sunday. So we think if you work with them properly and you market it right and use the right sales techniques, they're not gonna say no to this. And if they do, there's also a lot of businesses that would in that downtown area. So we can, all, we can always utilize those if others are, don't wanna do it. All right. If there's no more questions, uh, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate this. Uh, it was a great working with downtown Tupelo, getting to learn a little bit about it. Being from the north, I probably would have never ever been in Tupelo if not, and it is a beautiful little town. <laughs> so thank you very much, and have a happy holidays from uh, Oxford Direct. Thank you. Hey, Evan, we have